One of the major reoccurring elements in Ruin is the inability to trust anyone. Cassie learns this a few times throughout her journey. Firstly, she is lured to the Pizzaplex believing that she is there to rescue Gregory, only to have her own compassion and her friend's voice turned against her. Her trust in him being what pushes her onwards despite her reservations. She also trusts in Sun. After being attacked by Moon, he swaps to Sun who encourages her to turn on the generators. Considering what just happened, she would have to be wary, but she believes him and through that is able to awaken Eclipse. She trusts Freddy enough to run up to him and plead for help before he is revealed to be a monster. Cassie's ability to trust those who cannot be trusted and still not hold that bias over to people who can stands as a piece of her character, whether it be from naivety or not. Though throughout the game there are two characters who guide her along, not including the voice of Gregory, who she never really acknowledges as leading and misleading her respectively. And that would be Helpy. This is not the Helpy we've met before, a mascot for the newer versions of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, usually for maintenance and safety purposes, and not the one in Pizzeria Simulator who is shown as a toonish character standing in for the player when they try out rides and only physically as a little toy. This Helpy is an AI system. His design is different from Security Breach's Helpy, wearing technician overalls and a screen over his eye and carrying a fast wrench. And his gimmick is totally detached from his old counterparts. Created by whomever made the Vanny security system, likely Vanessa since she was a technician, previously worked with VR and AR, and worked with security. Helpy is an automated AI who exists to help the technician into their tasks with the use of the Vanny mask. He is a helpful tool that basically stands in for a tutorial. Except when he isn't. Now, you probably noticed I said two people, and that is because there are two beings playing the role of Helpy. It is not always the chatbot who is giving Cassie instructions, but I will be getting into that in a minute. Let me first clear something up. I would like to cover this quickly. Was the character encyclopedia's page on Pizzeria Simulator's Helpy being creepy and malicious a prediction to Helpy being quote-unquote evil? Was it calling this in advance? No, I think this was just ironic. The way the character encyclopedia talks about Helpy isn't necessarily saying that he's evil and betraying you. It just says he's not helpful, he's creepy, we can't stand him, he looks so weird, and misappropriating context from the various Helpy roles before this. Claiming that Helpy from Pizzeria Simulator was a creepy ghoul who's out to get you, which is just downright inaccurate. And considering what Helpy is compared to the Helpy AI, there's no direct correlation. By which I mean, it would be like comparing Freddy to Funtime Freddy. They might both be Freddy's, but they're from entirely different eras and fill completely different roles. Plus, there were plenty of inaccuracies throughout the character encyclopedia book. Check out my video if you'd like. I would definitely recommend watching the Henry Page section of that video because it pretty much sums up the biggest problem with the book. And my last point here is that Helpy isn't evil, because the person who is whispering in Cassie's ear isn't Helpy. Helpy has two distinct personalities taking the wheel. There is Helpy, who speaks like an AI, responding with very formulaic phrases, like something you would hear from a hand unit. This Helpy refers to Cassie as a technician and assists in a robotic and detached fashion. He talks very much like a chatbot assistant that you might encounter on a website. This Helpy has blue eyes. The other Helpy has yellow eyes with cracks along his face. This Helpy, the yellow-eyed Helpy, talks to Cassie in a very personal and occasionally snarky manner, often using phrasing that suggests he's talking down to her. And where the blue-eyed Helpy AI is largely automated, this yellow-eyed one is often able to directly respond to comments Cassie makes, usually by cryptically assuring her that she's not seeing what she's seeing. You know, gaslighting her. He also gives her direct commands, not just tutorial commands on how to use wrenches and open doors, but very direct steps and how she has to shut off all the security nodes and make her way to the sinkhole. Blue eyes assists in what she's doing, yellow eyes tells her what to do. It becomes apparent quickly that the yellow-eyed Helpy is directly misleading Cassie, that he is frequently downplaying Cassie's concerns to coerce her into doing what he wants. 
It is absolutely clear that this second being is not the Helpy AI, but someone else using it to invade into Cassie's mind. Possibly why Cassie frequently hears the screaming of kids from inside the mask, or hears memories of voice lines from Gregory and the Glamrocks. Something else has hitched onto her wagon. So, who is Yellow-Eyed Helpy? Well, likely the Mimic. I don't think it's a big jump to suggest that the creature who was capable of hijacking a phone line to reach Cassie outside of the Pizzaplex and then guided Cassie through a radio to continue leading her was capable of doing this. Yellow-Eyed Helpy's goals also align with the Mimic's, deactivate security and get to the sinkhole. Those lines from other characters that Cassie hears throughout the game could also be part of Mimic's software as it recognizes, remembers, and replays those lines. Specifically, Gregory's. And Mimic's manipulative behavior aligns with him downplaying Cassie's fear and feelings to keep her from changing her mind and leaving. This pretty much confirms that it wasn't the Mexus. Mexus wouldn't benefit from both goading Cassie along and trying to stop her. And it's clear from how he's trapped at the end that he wasn't exactly on board with getting boxed. So, likely Mimic. It should be noted that while Mimic's eyes look reddish, at their core, they are yellow. When he first appears, they look yellow, they're yellow in certain models, and it's only towards the end of the chase when the yellow pupils seem to fade into the rest of the eye color. In fact, in some lighting, Mimic's eyes just look blank white. That aside, I think I would say that the yellow core does fit with the yellow-dyed Helpy. Plus, if I may, giving Helpy red eyes might have been a little too obvious. It should be noted that there's a yellow light on the camera watching Cassie in the elevator, something that's a little unusual. This, plus Gregory going from talking on the radio to suddenly talking on the speaker with double lines, a glitch that was common in Security Breach but I don't think appeared anywhere in Ruin. While Gregory is somewhere outside the Pizzaplex, while Mimic is literally standing right beside exposed elevator wiring, makes me believe that it was Mimic who dropped the lift, not Gregory. The only evidence against that is that in the files, the voice lines are listed as Gregory's. But I have a running theory that it might be labeled as Gregory's, because labeling it as Grimmick or anything else would pretty much give away the mystery. Different topic entirely, but red herrings are always a possibility, especially if you want to keep something like this up in the air. The point is that we're seeing a lot of yellow. Though, it might not be the Mimic. So I don't think I've seen anyone mention this, but there is a slim possibility that the Mimic has an accomplice. I don't know who the heck would be helping this thing, but unless these are plot holes, we don't know how Mimic managed to get a radio if he was sealed away. We know Gregory was down there with Vanessa, but with how aggressive the Mimic is, it's hard to believe that he was just chilling out close enough to it to lose a radio. And it's weird to think Mimic stole the radio when he was supposedly behind concrete. I'm overthinking it. But also, who planted the connected radio close enough to the entrance for Cassie to find it? Was that just a serendipitous radio drop? We don't even know how Mimic was able to somehow connect to the outside world. We know he was supposedly listening from Candy Cadet's story, but how? This might all be one of those don't think about it things, but there is a slim chance he's not working alone. Here's a very unlikely possibility, so unlikely that I don't even believe it, but maybe Glamrock Bonnie's involved. The wet floor bots have the yellow eyes, Glamrock Bonnie has yellow eyes, they're connected together, as when the bots are shut down, Bonnie is too. This means that Bonnie is connected to a larger system, whatever it is. But other than that yellow, there's no evidence further connecting the two. Mimic and the yellow-eyed Helpy both have yellow eyes, they both have the same goals, both mislead Cassie, and the fake Helpy projects various voices, while we know Mimic remembers and recites lines. Yeah, I'd say that it's a little more than likely that this is Mimic. His first line mentions pairing with the transmitter, and I think that's basically Mimic hopping aboard Cassie's new mask to keep stringing her along. So that would be the incredibly short story of Helpy, but surprisingly enough, Helpy has another form, though this isn't Helpy with an I, but Helpy with a Y, and it's less another form and instead a cameo. In the Secret Brazil ending, where Cassie hides and sees an image through the Vanny mask while Mimic's chasing her, she sees an image of Gregory and Vanessa sitting atop a hill eating ice cream, like featured in the Saved Vanny ending. But instead of Glamrock Freddy's head, 
Gregory is accompanied by a little helpy animatronic. The helpy looks like the design from the original Security Breach and is eating an orange ice cream with little blue lightning bolts on it. Is this telling us that there is a real helpy out there? I think it might. I don't think it's the helpy AI, or if it is, there's no evidence suggesting it currently. I think we might finally have a real helpy. But there has been this belief that the Brazil ending is a projection made by Mimic to trick Cassie, but, but why? Why give her the illusion of a happy ending when he's tearing her apart? Possibly hiding inside of her. This doesn't match up with his MO or personality. Better yet, if he's projecting this, why project a friendly helpy anyways? One that doesn't match the one from the mask? I mean, I know endings can simply be non-canon or joke endings, but Steel Wolf's alternate endings have seldom introduced concepts that are entirely detached from reality. Why go through the effort of showing this helpy who is not the AI helpy with specific details like the ice cream? I'll get back to that in a minute, that's important. In the original Brazil ending, the one from the movie, the hallucination is brought on by the main character trying to escape their torture, and likely this is the same. How does Cassie know about Vanessa and Helpy? Well, maybe, assuming it's been a while since the Pizza Plex closed, as everything's in serious disrepair, and considering they're close friends, Cassie has probably met Gregory's mother and his little robot companion. Remember, the prize counter was selling staff bots. Robot toys are probably not that unheard of. Of course, we also see the missing Gregory poster, so it's also possible that Gregory's been missing for an extremely long amount of time, and then Cassie gets just this random message and decides to go after him. It's unclear, but my point still stands that I don't think this is just a completely throwaway scene. I can't believe that the discourse on theorizing has gotten to the point where I had to write three paragraphs to not immediately be written off by the inevitable comment that tells me the Brazil ending isn't real, and it doesn't mean anything, and that Helpy is just there because it's there and Steel Wool wasn't looking that far into it, even though Steel Wool went out of their way to include a ton of little details all over the place. This isn't the time and place for mucking around, but if I may, Sometimes it feels like there's so much discourse surrounding speculation on the plot of FNAF, like there's a handful of people who are allowed to throw out any theory or speculation no matter how outlandish it is, and then anybody else gets an amount of pushback unless they line up exactly with what they're saying. Theorizing is one of the things that built FNAF. It made FNAF fun, and the series is still built around constant speculation and few answers. So why is it now that there's this defensiveness against it? Sorry, that's just a thought. Plenty of people are nice about agreeing or disagreeing and explaining their feelings. I'm really just talking about, like, one loud voice amongst 50 softer ones, you know? So yeah, here's my personal take. I think Ruin gave the answer and closure to many characters. The daycare attendant, Bonnie, even Vanessa, sort of. And I think this Helpy, this little robotic companion to Gregory, who is not the Helpy assistant, who is eating an orange and blue Glamrock Freddy pattern ice cream cone, is Glamrock Freddy. Whether you believe Ruin Freddy is or isn't Glamrock Freddy, you must admit that moving Glamrock Freddy around in public and fueling his massive body with electricity would be a hassle. Especially when Gregory says they can't be found, if he doesn't just mean by the mimic. It would be beneficial to have Glamrock Freddy in a more compact body, and this little helpy would work like a charm. Security Breach takes place far enough in the future where robots like the staff bots aren't too shockingly state-of-the-art, and as I said earlier, you can win them at the prize counter. So having a little toy robot wouldn't be too weird, especially since back in the 80s, kids had things like Theodore and Finger Trap. And whether or not you believe the saved Vanny ending is canon, or the only ending or not, there is one big shining golden piece of evidence suggesting that the events of the ending at least happened, meaning that likely Glamrock Freddy was reduced to a head, in which case the only real way to give him a new body would be to downsize. And why I find the ice cream so telling is because Gregory's ice cream is a nondescript strawberry cone, and Vanessa's is just the same mint chocolate chip that she ate last time. I was wondering why Gregory wasn't eating a Freddy ice cream, but then I realized that now that the Pizza Plex is shut down, it might not be so easy to grab one, as they were sold at the Pizza Plex. Helpy has a bizarrely specific ice cream, one purposefully colored like Lamrock Freddy, and the Pizza Plex is gone, so it's not like you can say that he got it from there. 
Why else is this detail here? Because Steel Wool has proven that they are willing to sew in purposeful details. Personally, I think that's what this could mean. I think it's a secret bonus hint wrapping up Freddy's fate, a la Fredbear and Ice Cream Cutout, in a secret ending. If you prefer to believe that this means nothing, then that's fine, but that's also boring. And boring people don't get ice cream. Back of the line. So that's the story of Helpy the Helpful AI, Helpy the Liar, and Helpy the Mysterious Third, who actually wasn't involved in Cassie's trials at all. What do I think about how Helpy the AI and Liar were handled? Well, they were handled well. The discreet but noticeable swap between the two Helpies is a really neat twist. When I was playing the game for the first time, I noticed the change in behavior, but I wasn't looking very closely and didn't realize that the eyes changed color. That's actually pretty clever. But on the flip side, it does sort of lay the whole something's up here thing on a little heavy handed. And sometimes I felt like Helpy sort of wasn't necessary for the story. I get that they had to have someone to tell us what to do other than Gregory, because Mimic has to keep playing the I'm going into a tunnel thing. And I don't foresee this Helpy plotline really continuing on unless Helpy wasn't Mimic and was instead an accomplice, but it doesn't really need to continue. We got what we needed. Though I do hope that if my suspicion about the real Helpy is right, that he'll appear someday because he looks awfully cute, and I would love to hear Glamrock Freddy's voice coming out of this thing. Anywho, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.